Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're back in the fish room. I'm doing a few jobs. So I thought I'd show you around and talk about what I'm doing. Basically, I'm doing some holiday prep. So it's the time of year where lots of people are going on holiday. I see lots of questions across all various types of social media about how do you prepare your fish tank to go on holiday? So I thought we'd talk about it a little bit. Biggest change, as you can see, is Humphrey's back in his big tank. There he is, trying to kill me from afar. Chill. Um, I have a kind of general rule about holidays or vacations, depending where you come from in the world. I mean, I don't like rules in general, but if it's a week, even a week to 10 days, if I'm going away for that length of time, my general approach to prep is nothing. Don't do anything. Don't change anything. Don't do anything special. Don't add anything. Don't take anything away. Fish will survive. As long as you've been keeping the, the fish happy and healthy for the 50 weeks of the year that you're not away, there's no reason why they can't last a week or two all on their own without any special help. Here is my scraper. So this isn't necessarily going to be a list of, these are my top five things you should do when you go on holiday. It's more of the top five things you shouldn't do. I have no idea if there'll actually be five of them. But number one on the list is definitely, don't do anything special. Don't change something. So if you don't do, large water changes. Don't do a large water change the day before you go on holiday. When you upset the balance of a tank, you need to be there to monitor it to see whether it works, whether it has any negative effects, whether it has positive effects. So I do large water changes all the time, so I know my tanks are going to be fine when I do a large water change. I can pretty much guarantee I can get away with most things in the fish room because of the amount of water that I put through here. If it's my house tanks where I only tend to do small, infrequent water changes, I'm not going to go up there and do 100% water change because that will make them happy for the rest of the holiday. If you do want to do that kind of prep, it's still possible, but do it a week or two before you go so you can do it in advance, see what happens, and then just before you go, do another small one to make sure you're not doing anything too extreme. Same with new foods, new fish. Don't add anything, don't move the decorations around, don't change anything just because you're going on holiday. It's the number one thing is, I think I'm doing a good thing, but I'm actually doing harm. So lots of things that seem like good ideas on the face of it, don't do them for the holiday. Do them months in advance if you want to do them. They're, these are all good ideas, they're just not good ideas to do the day before you go away. Similarly, Holiday blocks, those stupid feeder things that you drop in. This will feed your fish for seven days. Nonsense, ignore that. Finding a friend to come and feed your fish. Just don't bother, they will be fine. If you are uh, limping into that longer holiday period and you, you are starting to worry about feeding your fish, um, those pill boxes are, are a great idea because the, the best will in the world is a non-fish keeper that doesn't know your fish will generally do something by mistake. They're not, they're not going to do it on purpose, but they'll generally overfeed. They'll think you can't possibly feed all those fish with this little amount, I'll throw in half a tub. And then they walk away and they don't see the signs and the water gets all fouled and then oh, And then it's just that effect of everything adding on to everything else. Because all these changes that I'm talking about, they're good things, but the slightest change when you're not there to react to it has the potential to be a bad thing. So that's why we avoid doing new things. You got an automatic water change system you're really proud of and it's been faultless and hasn't skipped a beat. Turn it off when you're away because that's when it will break. I'm aware there are still people out there who turn their lights on and off. Invest in a timer, but don't do it just before you go on holiday. If anything, I would like to see people just turn the lights off. Your plants will be fine without light for a week or two. Um, it's all about reducing the chances for failure. Anything that can go wrong by sod's law will go wrong. So just turn your lights off. If you've not got a well-established routine for timers, don't, don't, don't do it. In my old fish room, I haven't quite set it up here, but in my old fish room, I used to use automatic feeders all the tanks because I could come down every day and see how much food they've been dispensing. But sod's law dictates that as soon as I leave the building, they all fail instantly and dump all the food in and everything starts to rot and kills everything. So I would actually take my automatic feeders away when I went on holiday. So just stop, chill. If you're here because you've searched on Google, what do I do with my fish tank when I'm on holiday? You're already worrying about it too much. Just relax. And yes, there will be people who have very specific requirements. So if you're a breeder and you've got lots of young fish, they're not going to fare so well being left alone for that amount of time. But if you're a breeder and you're breeding fish en masse, 
you've probably already got a solution. You don't need to listen to what I think you should do. If you're a hobbyist who has a tank and lots of fish happen to have had babies, still don't worry about it. Your tank is going to be mature enough that if your fish are happy to breed in there, there'll be lots of microorganisms, infusoria and that sort of thing in your mature established tank that will keep the fry happy for however long it needs before you get back there. And again, that's why I'm saying don't do things like go and buy a new fish because often when you buy fish from your local fish shop, they're juveniles and the juveniles do need a little bit more attention. So think about your holidays, plan them, by all means worry about it, but don't get too hung up on these things. There are plenty of ways we as aquarists, me specifically as aquarists, can kill fish. Going on holiday is not going to be one of them. If you just take a step back, relax, do your regular weekly maintenance or fortnightly maintenance, whatever you do, do it just before you go, then don't think about it. Enjoy your holiday, come back and everything will be fine. Um, like I say, there's loads of ways that we can take care of our fish and there's loads of ways we can fail our fish, but you not going on holiday or stressing while you're on holiday doesn't help you or them. So not that many more changes since last time we spoke, I don't think, depending on the last video you saw, but obviously we had a couple of deaths that Arowana committed Harry Gary, so I've given up on Mega Tank for the time being, I'm just taking a break from it, so I've moved Humphrey back into his original home, his big home, give him a bit of space to stretch his fins. We've got the snake heads obviously over there, still hiding away in their little dark tank. And then upstairs we've got some discus, angels, rainbows, key buffers. Over on this bank we've got down below the African tank, the Congo tank. Again, another gutting loss from that tank. The biter didn't, didn't survive. I don't know quite what happened. He was eating well looking healthy and then yeah just gone but we talked about all this in the live streams i don't want to depress everyone by going through it again here and then upstairs we've got the oscars the green terror slash gold song and then the fry tank over here so this is my little worry for when we're away so in here we've got a bunch of what i'm pretty certain are um neon rainbow fry and what I've done here to keep them going is I've taken a load of moss from other tanks, a load of filter media, gathered it together. And what this is going to do is create some kind of little ecosystem in there. There's loads of living things and these big massive balls of moss. There's loads of living things in there, which is going to be enough. I hope, he says with cross crossed fingers, it's going to be enough to keep them going for the next week while I'm away. And um, while you're watching this, if you're watching this and the day it comes out, I should actually be on holiday. So come and join me on Friday uh, at 9pm on the live stream. We'll talk about this and we'll see whether or not it actually worked. And they made it through and survived. But in theory, no reason why they shouldn't. One thing I have done is in the lead up to the holiday, I have ramped up the feeding a little bit. So maybe 10% more than what I would normally give them for a couple of weeks before I know I'm going away, give them a little bit more, get them into a good, healthy, um, well-fed shape, knowing that then when I go away for a week, they're going to be okay. And that's kind of similar for all the fish. So this guy might have got a few extra treats in the last few days because he, he knows, or I know that I'm going away. So I'll give him a little bit more, which will sustain him a little bit while we're away. And that's, that's really the general premise of things. And then in terms of a fish room update, this is obviously, this is Mega Tank, or the remains of it. Um, if you haven't watched the channel before, this is my homemade tank. It's eight foot by four foot by three foot ish. Um, I've had it filled several times and it has leaked several times. The, every time it's leaked, it's leaked from this corner, but I think it's actually inside the tank. But what I said to myself is for the good of my mental health, I'm going to kind of ignore Mega Tank for, I said a week, but I got into a position where I was so pissed off about it that I really, I just couldn't find any motivation to get back to it. So I'm going to give this, I was going to give it this week, get back in there and do things, but I'm going to give it until I come back after my holidays. Just forget about it completely, restore my faith in my hobby, restore the joy in the hobby, and then come back to it. So Mega Tank is not dead, it's just on pause. And I think that's really good. If you are a regular subscriber and viewer, you might have noticed in the last few live streams, I was getting a little bit down about the hobby and in general, and the motivation was lacking and I was just, I'd had enough. So I really need to just take a break from this and then we'll come back to it afterwards. 
and it was a, an un a series of unfortunate events, shall we say so. We had a few leaks, I lost a couple of fish, everything seemed to be going wrong, nothing, nothing was actually working or going right. So it's times like that, you just need to take a little step back and say, okay, we'll put this on pause, we'll concentrate on all the other fish and all the other projects that don't get a look in normally, and we'll come back to Mega Tank. It's not going anywhere, unless I set it on fire, I suppose. So from me and from Humphrey, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope to see you in the next one. If you are interested in this kind of thing, please click that subscribe button, it really helps out. And we also do a live stream every Friday, most Fridays, uh, at 9pm UK time. Come along, ask your questions, join in the chat, just say hello. Um, it's a good place to hang out. We've also got all the Discord servers and things like that. Links in all the description, but thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!